coming on this nice, cozy, rainy afternoon. Um, of course, we have Jane Eli here talking about her book, Coming Into Balance. Uh, so I just wanted to thank you all for coming, and thank you, Jane, for blessing us with your presence. And we can just welcome Jane with a round of applause. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> well, thank you for coming, and um, thank you for your support for this book. Um, I'd like to introduce Tracy Slatton, who's here holding up the iPad. Hi, I'm recording. <laughs> recording this. Just Jane, though. Um, Tracy is the publisher of this book from Parvati Press, and I'm really honored to have you here, Tracy. Thank you. Very my pleasure. Much. Yeah, Tracy herself is an author and uh, writes really very interesting, spiritually interesting books. Um, very modern. Some are mysteries. Some are um, how would you historical say? fiction. Historical fiction, right? Mm -hmm. Really interesting work, and. Um, this book that we're here to celebrate today is called Coming Into Balance. And it's a book that I began writing um, in 2009. It took me five years to write it, but it actually took me my entire life <laughs> to live it. So um, it is a compilation of 20 years of private practice um, as a counselor, as a healer, as a therapist. And it's also a compilation of um, my indigenous culture. I'm a Mi'kmaq from Nova Scotia, Canada. I'm Chalagi, um, and I also have the name Navajo on my uh, great grandmother's side. So um, the indigenous way of this book really was taught to me from a very, very early age. And um, one of the things that was taught to me early on by my grandfather is that we all have an indigenous nature. It's not just about being Native American Indian or First Nations Canadian Indian. Um, each one of us has within us uh, a heart that is very ancient and very wise and carries the wisdom in our bones of our culture. One of the other things that I like to say to people is that you don't have to uh, know what the medicine wheel is in order to use this book. This kind of, this talk that we're going to do today and this kind of um, question answer that I'd like to engage you in is really um, a discussion as well as a little bit of education and information um, because the, the indigenous nature of all peoples is global and the medicine wheel itself actually is found in almost every indigenous culture, including um, the ancient Gaelic, Hindu cultures, Tibetan, um, do you know it, Mayan, Central and South American cultures. Anywhere you see a spiral, um, you know, in the Greek cultures, um, anywhere you see a spiral or a wheel, that is a medicine wheel, and it has a meaning. In this case, we're looking at the meaning of the medicine wheel and how it supports us in transforming our own lives. And I wrote this book as kind of a how-to, do it yourself. Get in, roll up your sleeves, um, and find ways within this book that speak to you about your own personal transformation. And so there are some very simple exercises in the book that are very deceptively simple. But if you really use them, they deepen. And the more you use the book, the deeper the book goes. And so I say to folks, when you've read it once through, start again. Go back in and, and go at it again. I. Um, designed this book with a wonderful designer named uh, Susan Caldwell. And it was her idea to put these um, parts in the book where you could draw, sketch, write, um, you know, your own insights, your own thoughts. And throughout the book there are pages that are just left blank 
for you to do that in, or there are pages that are lined that you can use this book as a journal. I don't know about you, but every single book that I've ever read that I really like, I've drawn in, I've underlined, I've made notes in the margin, you know. So I think books are, are meant to be interactive, and they're also meant to be beautiful. Um, and this book is beautiful. It's a very beautiful book. Um, Susan took some of the concepts in this book, like the chakras, <coughs> the, sh the chakra system, the, the energy system that we all operate with, and she was able to take my concepts of how the chakras operate in the medicine wheel, and what the meaning of the wheel means to our human energy field chakra system. So the book has beauty as well as function. And, um, and I really like that about it. So I'm gonna start by reading just a little bit and then um, open it up for some questions. How many people here have the book? like to borrow it during the talk, you're welcome. Hi, come on in. This is my neighbor. Thank you so much for coming. It's a pleasure. So I'm going to begin by a quote by Eckhart Tolle. And he says, are you polluting the world or cleaning up the mess? You are responsible for your inner space. Nobody else is, just as you are responsible for the planet. As within, so without. If humans clear inner pollution, then they will cease to create outer pollution. That is the foundation upon which this book has been written. One of the things that um, I have been taught as an indigenous person by my grandparents is that when we clean up our own inner space, we affect change in the outer world. And um, that's kind of the anthem of the book, or what I would call the spirit song, that is created and is inculcated in every word of this book, in every concept. It really is about healing ourselves, and in so doing, we take responsibility and that then ripples out into our planet. And it ripples out through our actions, through our energy field, to our relationships with one another. And it goes like concentric circles out into the world. And so um, the other thing that I'd like to start with is the United Nations Environmental Committee prayer. And it says, we who have lost our sense and our senses, our touch, our smell, our vision of who we are, we who frantically force and press all things without rest for body or spirit, hurting our earth and injuring ourselves, we call a halt. We want to rest. We need to rest and to allow the earth to rest. We need to reflect and to discover the mystery that lives within us, that is the ground of every unique expression of life, the source of the fascination that calls all things into communion. We declare a Sabbath a space of quiet for simply being and letting be, for recovering the great forgotten truths, for learning how to live again. 